okay <laughs> okay guys now welcome back uh, with the adaptation of the the uh, bird speaks now if you look over for the bird speaks also uh, we have another kind of adaptation for their beaks okay now uh, uh, here uh, i want you to open your book please if you have if you have the book if you have the book open your book please page 22 if you have the book please open your book page 22 if you do not have the book, no problem, I have one. Can you look over in my screen, please? Now, bird speaks. As you see here, we have different bird speaks. Now, the first one here is a long and curved and very, very strong. The second one here, uh, long and orange, and we have something like bouched out. And a third one, this tweet is this very simple and very a uh, lovely bird. This one have uh, this very small uh, uh, beak. Okay. Now, what is the difference? Why they are different in their beaks? Why they are not all the same? Why? That's a very important question. You can find the answer here in this paper, page 22. Please, please, please search for the answer in this page in your book and they make under the different places they will live in and it help them to eat food and because the birds have a different uh, uh, places they also have a different types of food to eat so they have different shapes of beaks one of them eat meat one another eat fish one another eat uh, worms and like that so the uh, uh, all of the beaks will be different from one another because of the different places and the different uh, uh, food they eat and that is the adaptation to let them to eat um, okay next page next page 23 next page 23 you can see that here the shapes of another shapes of beaks we have this uh, woodpecker and the penguin now listen for this video to understand more how can they use their beaks to survive now listen please long beak. It drinks nectar from the flowers with its beak. Hind. Probing beaks. The hummingbird, the world's smallest bird, has a long beak. It drinks nectar from the flowers with its beak. Chiseling beaks. Birds like the woodpecker have a strong, long and straight beak to peck at the wood and eat insects present in the wood. They also use it as a chisel to make a hole in the tree which serves as a nest. Birds' beaks keep... Okay guys, now uh, this in this uh, video you can see that the hummingbirds uh, uh, has long and very small beaks, okay, uh, very thin beaks, I mean, okay, to help them to uh, absorb the nectar from the flower, as you see here, absorb the sweet from the flower. Now, this one, this long beak allow them to uh, absorb the nectar, okay. <clears throat> what about the woodpecker? This one will eat the insect down of the, uh, of the trees, and also they will make nests by shaving the trees, by shaving the trees, so their beak it will be very strong and sharp. Okay, uh, by this way you can understand the uh, the, the uh, different kinds of beaks. We have different uh, uh, different kinds of them to allow them to survive into the environment. Okay, now at the end here, uh, I just give you notes about this line here in page uh, twenty three. We have here mistake in the book talking about if the living things do not develop traits. I think this develop this wrong word. We can't say that develop of the traits because the traits not develop. The trait it will be the same, but they will adapt by their traits. They adapt with the environment. 
okay, not develop. The, the traits are not developed at all. The, the traits not develop at all. The traits for all organisms, it will be the same. Because it's a theory, the Nazaria Adima, it's all the theory, and this is the wrong theory, not right. And the traits not develop at all. But the traits, it will be the same, but maybe the traits will help the organism to adapt with the environment. Okay, maybe the, uh, if we have the fat of the uh, bingo, for example, the fat will be bigger and like just it, but the trait, it will be the same. Okay, now I have finished this part. The, let's move for the, uh, uh, the bland adaptations. But before that, if you have a question, raise your hand up on the list. Okay, raise your hand up on the list. Please guys, just the questions, just the questions. Don't tell me answer or don't tell me anything else. If you have something you don't understand or like that. Yes, Trot. Trot, question? Teacher? Yes. Some animals, uh, some birds, he eat insects. Yes. Right. Yeah, like this bird. Yes, you are right. Like a uh, woodpecker. Yes, thanks. Yes, Abdullah. Mr. Mr. Yes. Go, go up in the, this uh, picture because you want to write this. You want to write what? Uh, Here? Uh, All of this? Yeah. No, this yeah. is so long to write it. You, you should have the book to write it. It's so long to write it. No problem, no problem. Right, 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 right. No problem. Yes, another question, guys? Yes, Yusuf? 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 Okay. Uh, Al Walid? Teacher. Now, yes. Uh, birds eat animals. Yes, birds what? Teacher, I can tell you something. I'm so sorry, Yusuf. You can't tell me anything. I'm so sorry because of time. Do you have a question? Yeah. Yes, ask it please quickly. Okay. How the birds, uh, the, their feet not the same. Why? The birds why? what? Why the birds, their feet not the same. The birds feet not the same? Why, but the same way, uh, Yusuf. Good question, Yusuf. Yeah, good question, good question. Now, the feet for all of them will adapt with the environment. Some of them will catch the, the, the prey, like eagle, like eagle. They have very strong and sharp legs, sharp feet, okay? And some another will be very small, not need these sharp feet, like that. But good question. They also, the feet will adapt with their surrounding. Okay, guys, thanks all for your asking. Thanks all for all of you. Now, uh, let's move for next part. Uh, okay, now, uh, the, your homework for today, my friends, uh, you, you can look over in this page, in your book, page 24. Page 24, you, you have this schedule in page 24. Okay, now, you watch the video, you watch the video on Classera, and after that, answer this, uh, under this table. Okay, you watch the video in Classera and answer this table. Okay, that's homework for you today. Okay, okay, okay. Now let's move for the blend adaptation. The blend adaptation. Okay. Uh, uh, do we do the blend make adaptation also like animals? Ha, yes or no, Ashabab? Open your microphone and answer. All blends make adaptation. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Now let me to ask you another question. Now, the blend, of course, they are living things. What the blend needs to stay alive? The blend needs what? Yeah, open your microphone and answer. Anyone? Yes. Water. 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 Very good, guys. Yeah, I hear a lot of answers right. Now, it, it needs water, nutrients, sunlight, and carbon dioxide it can breathe like you 
okay? Now it eats and it drink water and it breathe carbon dioxide, okay? The plant need these four things, water, nutrients, sunlight, and the uh, um, carbon dioxide. How the plant can get their needs in the different ecosystems? Of course, guys, not all ecosystems like each other. Of course, they are different. And we have some climate that are very, very hard. Now, I want you to relax all the class. Relax and be more concentration to uh, give you this story about different kinds of plants. Please, please relax and just look over on my screen. Okay, guys? Trod, relax and look over my screen. Faisal, Muhammad Saleh, but don't sleep. Don't sleep. Hamza, don't sleep, Hamza. Okay? Be with me, please. Now listen to this amazing video. Iyad, Iyad, Iyad. Be with me, Iyad, okay? Look over my screen and keep calm. Okay, Habib Albi? Okay, now listen. In one day, we have different kinds of trees. And these trees live in very difficult climate. Listen. In some parts of the world, the beauty of winter masks the stress it poses for plants. During now, in some places, we have beauty of winter. The winter, sometimes we have ice, we have water, and that's a very beauty. But in fact, it will make a stress for these organisms, for these weak organisms here that are plants. In this season, sunlight is scarce, temperatures plunge. But, and also, unfortunately, we do not have more sunlight. And this no, uh, a lot of snow and a lot of ice. And soil often becomes hard with ice. Plants here get ready for these conditions in the fall. But in fact, these trees will be, uh, um, will be ready to face all of these actions, all of this climate. They are ready to adapt with the environment, with these very, very cold places. When most begin to lose their green color. Now, these plants or these trees start to lose their green color. Now, that is the adaptation for this plant, to lose their green color. Why they lose their green color? Listen. They stop making new chlorophyll, the chemical needed to produce food. As the old chlorophyll breaks down, the color of leaves begins to change. Now they lose the chlorophyll. And that's chlorophyll, of course, you know the chlorophyll, it's used it for uh, make it food, for the photosynthesis process. But it lose it to make, uh, to let all the, tr the leaves to fall. Why it make that? It's something like hibernation. Do you remember the hibernation of animals? The hibernation sleep a lot of time. Why? To reduce energy. The same thing here, guys. The, le the, the leaves will, uh, uh, will fall down. All leaves. Why? Be to reduce energy. Don't get away a lot of energy because no more sunlight, no more water in this place, so they cannot make their food. Deciduous trees shed I'm their. Sorry, guys, just a minute. Let's see what about this boy. Naam, ya Ahmed Abdel Hafiz. Ahmed Abdel Hafiz. Ahmed Abdel Hafiz. Open your microphone, please, Ahmed. Ahmed Abdel Hafiz, open your microphone. You interrupt me, Ahmed, Wallahi. You make me mad. Listen, my friends. Leaves each year and remain inactive until spring. Kind of like bears in hibernation. But conifers are... Okay, guys. Now, the first, uh, ver first kind of plant live in places there are no sunlight. 
how they can adapt they will uh, they will let all the leaves without any chlorophyll and let all the uh, uh, all these leaves to go, uh, to uh, uh, to move down okay till the spring come and that when we have sunlight it can make their food again now let's move for another plant that is conifers plant the conifers plant live in places that are very very hard uh, uh, climate there we have a lot of ice and there are no sunlight and as you see here very difficult climate conifers are hardy adapters to all kinds of environments they're flexible branches this is the first adapt they have flexible branches now their stem of trees very flexible because they will hold a lot of snow above them bend as snow accumulates dropping loads of snow to the ground below most have small leathery leaves now most of them have small leathery leaves this leaves like uh, uh, binds like that okay now this like needles okay very uh, small and very thin shaped like scales or needles a waxy coating keeps moisture in and guards against ice and also they have a waxy skin to keep the water inside the narrow shape of needles lets the wind and snow pass between them now subhanallah now look over guys for this shape why the shape of this uh, 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 buying cones it will be look like that L look like this uh, uh, these needles why to let the wind and the snow pass between the uh, uh, these leaves so it makes it uh, every time moist don't lose a lot of water moist and prevents them from drying out and prevent them from drying out not let them to drying out since many conifers don't lose their leaves, they are ready to produce food as soon as spring arrives. Now, in this case, the conifers don't lose their leaves uh, like the, the previous uh, uh, trees. No, this one uh, have uh, the leaves, but these leaves will become fresh and become green more when we have a sunlight and when the spring become. Other plants have to grow new leaves all over again. Let's move for another climate. It will be very, very, very hard. In this place, we do not have a lot of water. It's sunny, hot, dry. This very uh, difficult climate also. In some of the hottest places on Earth, cactus plants withstand unforgiving conditions. Now we have unforgiving conditions with these cactus. The giant saguaro cactus lives in the Sonoran Desert in the southwest United States. Live in deserts, of course. In deserts, as you know, we have dry, hot, sun all the year. Here, temperatures climb to more than 100 degrees, and less than 4 inches of rain falls each year. Now, we don't have a lot of raining. We don't have a lot of raining. Very little water in this place. With plenty of sun, they get the energy they need. But water is a much different story. Now we have a lot of energy from the sun, but the problem is the water. How they can get the water? As you know, from the beginning, we said that we had that plant need water, sunlight, uh, uh, nutrients, and, and carbon dioxide. The, it has all, but it, it cannot take the water. How they can store water and bring water? To collect moisture, they rely on a network of widespreading roots. They Subhanallah. Can you see that, guys? That, that are roots. That are spreading roots. These roots get out from, get out above of the soil, above of the sand. Get out from the land outside here. Why? Why? To, uh, and these roots also cover very large. Can you see that? Very large area. Why? To collect all the moist from the air. We have water in air, of course. Yes, we have water in air. And these roots, these spreading roots will, uh, uh, will uh, attract and carry all the wet and all the water from air. They cover large areas of the desert ground. They grow a good distance apart from each other as a result. 
Their tough, rubbery outer layer help. Now we have tough, rubbery outer layer to help them store a lot of water inside. Don't let any water to get out. Store all water inside. Helps them store any moisture for months at a time. For a short time during the spring. Now that's another adaptation. Can you see that flower? The, the flower of these uh, cats. Spring. The saguaro produces white blossoms. These buds open at night, providing a feast for long-nosed bats. The bats feed on the flowers and pollinate the cacti at the same time. Now, the, the, uh, and this one open at night, not open at, open at morning. Now, open at night, why? To attract the bats. When the bats can get to eat from this flower, it will make something called the pollination. We will talk about pollination in other sessions, inshallah. But this pollination will make seeds after that. Now, we have flower. After flower, it, uh, the, the bats will make pollination. And uh, after pollination, we have fruit and we have seeds inside the fruit. This allows energy-rich fruit to form. Its seeds will feed all kinds of desert animals. These cacti reach heights of up to 50 feet and can live for almost 300 years. Oh, Surprise. subhanAllah, amazing. Can you see that how, uh, how the tall, can you see the stem, how that's thick and a huge, uh, a huge stem? Do you know why? Because it stored a lot of water inside, like the camel's hemp. Do you remember the camel's hemp stored all the water and food inside? The same thing here. This one has also hemp, but not hemp. This stem store all food and water inside. And this one can live for 300 years. Subhanallah. Surprisingly, their biggest threat isn't the heat at all. It comes from cities that are expanding nearby. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy this story. I hope you understand. Thanks a lot for listening. I will take one question from...